everybody, Wannabe Reviewer here, and welcome back to the Wannabe Podcast, episode 67. Now, before we get into this week's podcast, really quickly, I just want to, you know, remind slash throw it out there that the Cuphead giveaway is still going. You know, uh, for anyone who doesn't know or anyone who needs a refresher, once again, on the 3rd, which was a Monday, I put up a video talking about my Cuphead giveaway, where basically in order to try to draw people to the channel, as well as celebrate the fact that Cuphead made it into Smash Bros. Ultimate, I have a code for a free copy of Cuphead for the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you're interested, it's really easy. All you gotta do is number one, subscribe to me on YouTube and leave a message on the video saying you're interested. That gives you one entry. Number two, follow me over on Twitter. That gives you a second entry. And number three, follow me over on twitch.tv slash wannabe underscore reviewer, and that gets you a chance at your third entry. So if you follow these three steps, you have the potential to be entered into the giveaway, you know, three times. And basically the way it's going to work is that, you know, I said I was going to run it for about two weeks. So on the 17th, this upcoming Monday, I'm going to close down the uh, contest. I'm going to get all the names, throw them into a hat. Last person that gets picked out is the winner. And sure enough, I'll try to put the video up either like Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, once the vi- once the uh, contest ends and whoever wins, you know, you can tell me how you want me to message you. You know, do you want me to like email you, direct message you on like Twitter or whatever, and I'll get you that code so you can get your game. So once again, guys, if you're interested, make sure to get your entries in. I think it's some pretty exciting stuff. I've seen that there's a few people who are really interested in, you know, winning the game. And of course, you know, I'm really interested to see who finally gets the game code. So yeah, it's been fun so far. So I want to see how that ends. So once again, guys, you have until this Monday to make your entries. All right. Uh, With that being said, guys, you know, moving on to the rest of the podcast, I'll admit that it seems like it was a pretty quiet week. Not only when it came to news, surprisingly, but honestly, I've just been so swamped with work and I've just been so busy with my, like, you know, in real life life that I'll admit I didn't do much. All right. So just want to throw that out there. You know, not, don't expect anything too exciting. And going off of that, I will talk about something at the end that has to do with like the state of the channel. But for now, you know, just, you know, I guess like put a, put down a sticky note, I guess, you know. But uh, moving on to my week, surprisingly enough, I didn't watch any new anime. Uh, I did look up some series, you know. There's an anime series that ended that I totally forgot to talk about because it was on a weird hiatus. And so I'm hoping to watch it to talk about it next time. We'll see how that goes. And I did look up a new series that I don't know how I missed it, but it sounds interesting. So I'll also try to look into that. But at least for this week, though, nothing new to report. Basically, just been watching what I've mentioned before, trying my best to, you know, get caught up on ongoing anime. So for this week, nothing too interesting. I would just say, you know, look at what I've talked about past weeks. And if you're interested in anime, just look into one of those shows, you know. Uh, Moving on, when it comes to uh, any other type of TV show, same thing. Didn't watch anything new. However, when it comes to movies, I did finally watch jojo rabbit uh, i'd have been interested in watching this movie for a while for anyone who doesn't know it's uh directed by taika watiti the same guy who's made movies like uh what was it the third thor movie uh he made that one like really funny movie called uh what we do in the shadows that's like this documentary sort of thing about vampires that's really fun and yeah, overall he's just like this really fun like comedy director and basically you know he made this movie called jojo rabbit Uh, It was getting a lot of attention because it was up for a lot of, you know, Oscars or whatever. And so I finally watched it and I liked it. You know, it's it's a very strange film, but it is really interesting. Uh, For anyone who doesn't know, like I said, it's directed by Taika Waititi. Uh, You know, actors like Scarlett Johansson come out in it. Sam Rockwell, uh, you know, a few actors like that, as well as Taika Waititi himself. And basically it's this movie that focuses on this little kid called jojo that he's growing up during world war ii in germany and he's like this huge nazi fanboy i mean since everywhere around and people are talking about being a nazi and you know having a national pride and being like a hitler youth and stuff you know he's really grown up with that and he really like believes in the cause 
And, you know, he believes in the cause so much that he wants to like, grow up to be a soldier. And he even has like an imaginary friend that's like this goofy version of Adolf Hitler played by Taika Waititi. And so it's just like a really interesting, very strange premise. And what I, get, what I think makes the movie so interesting is that it balances like the comedy and the goofiness really well with like the sad, more like somber moments of the film, you know? Because like I said, you know, the premise is there's this little kid that doesn't know any better. And so he's like a huge Nazi fanboy. But then as you kind of see him see the reality of like the war and, you know, what the Nazis are doing to like Jewish people and how it's kind of tearing his country apart and like that sort of thing. It is interesting to see how the movie really shifts from this goofy over, you know, nationalistic you know, viewpoint of this little boy to like really changing to seeing the reality of stuff and seeing like the horror of war, you know? Like near the end, there's like this really great sequence where he kind of sees that Germany is falling to like the uh, allied forces and him seeing like, the war all around him. And I don't know, it's just really crazy how he kind of sees what really war, what war really is for the first time. And just the fact this movie does both, like I said, it has like this goofy, like silliness to it and this like seriousness to it. The way it balances out both so well it's just like really well done you know so i enjoyed the movie i thought it was interesting i thought the premise is interesting i thought the way it tackled you know like the silly stuff with the serious stuff was really well done and i thought the acting was pretty good you know i thought scar johansson did a really good job as a single mother or whatever raising this little kid i thought that was really well done uh, i thought the kid actors in it were pretty fun the main kid you know he did a really good job uh there's this little friend of his this little fat kid with glasses every time that kid was on screen i was always laughing because you just gotta watch it that kid's hilarious and you know some of the smaller actors too like sam rockwell and rebel wilson you know they just did a good job as their characters too you know they were just like really interesting and kind of charming you know as like their weird characters or whatever so overall jojo rabbit i liked it i can see why i got so much praise because it definitely is an interesting movie and i would recommend it you know i think it's it does a really good job of being a satire of the over you know like nazi fanboyism while also like i said having that like serious heart to it so i like the movie i recommend it you know i would say you know if you have a chance to watch it you know go ahead and watch it it's, it's pretty good uh moving on when it comes to the rest of my week honestly the rest of my week was just really caught up with a lot of work the only other thing i did is that i played a bit of two games that i've already mentioned before uh one is that i played more bloodstained ritual of the night uh as i talked about last week i've been playing it on my xbox one because, you know, uh, it has it's part of that Game Pass thing where it's just in the library of games that you can play. Since I had heard that it runs better on Xbox One, I decided to check it out. And sure enough, you know, I've been playing through the game. I am farther than I had gone before on the Switch version. So that's really interesting. And continue to enjoy the game. I think it's really fun. Maybe I'll stream it at, at some point, you know. That way anyone who saw me play, like, the opening of the game on the switch that way they can maybe see you know the difference of what the game is like when you're like really like powered up and you have a lot of things going on i mean that might, that might be interesting so i'll see about that you know no promises but you know maybe i'll maybe i'll stream it sometime that, that could be fun so blood sand ritual and i continue to enjoy it and i think it runs really well on xbox one so there you go uh, as for the second thing that I played, once again, it's something I've talked about before and not anything too exciting, but uh, I dipped back into Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Uh, you know, since Pokemon Home got released, I've been really trying to figure out, you know, how it works and, you know, if it's worth buying the plan and how it works to transfer over Pokemon. Because one of the things that I've been interested in is that I really played a lot of Pokemon Go up until recently, honestly, up until like early last year, no, I mean like late last year, like around like October, November-ish, I was still really, really playing it a lot. And so I have like a lot of Pokemon in my Let's Go game, you know? I have like, I don't know, like a good like 300 like different Pokemon. Out of Gen 1, I easily have like my Pokedex at like 140, I think. So yeah, you know, I, I had really put in some time into Pokemon, you know, Go on, on the mobile, you know, the mobile game. And I was trying to figure out how to get the Pokemon from the mobile game onto the let's go eevee game and so because of that you know i dived into the game was figuring all that stuff out then i was trying to figure out how to transfer them over to pokemon home or whatever and all i can really say is that yeah 15 dollars a year definitely feels overpriced even though it is the kind of thing where like okay you pay it once 
forget about it for the whole year and it is only like a dollar something for like a month it still feels overpriced i think 15 is quite a bit i think maybe they should have priced it honestly like at like seven dollars a month or i mean seven dollars a year or something i mean pokemon bank i think was like 5.99 back in the day or like 4.99 so i understand them maybe increasing it a little bit but i still think 15.99 is quite a bit i do think that's like kind of expensive and besides that uh transferring pokemon from the mobile app to let's go eevee is kind of a hassle that i didn't really enjoy because basically you gotta pair your phone to your switch you got to transfer Pokemon over 50 at a time. And then in order to get them into the Pokedex and, you know, the box so you can put them into home, you have to go and you have to, like, basically run into your Pokemon in, like, the overworld again. And then you have to, like, catch them. And catching them is really hard for some reason. Like, you know, if you've ever played Pokemon Go, like the mobile version, usually the way it works is that if it's, like, a really low-level Pokemon... You don't have to do much. Usually just throw in a Pokeball. You know, as long as you like time it right, that's usually enough to catch the Pokemon. But then once you get into like a higher level Pokemon, that's where it gets a little harder. And you have to like really think your strategy of like, you know, using uh, stronger Pokeballs, using a combination of fruit, and usually, you know, timing it or whatever. Here though, for whatever reason, even the really low level Pokemon take forever to catch which i think is like really annoying like i had a little level 30 squirtle that the reason i really wanted to put it in my box is because it's a shiny squirtle and so i really wanted to like you know i guess to get it in my box and despite being level 30 and that's in like go value a level 30 you know in go value i think it's only like a level 8 in like pokemon you know usual value so despite it only having like a combat power of 30 which is like a level eight Squirtle. I still had to use like an, like three Ultra Balls and like three different fruit and had to time it perfectly and get like, like two excellence in a row to catch the Pokemon. And I just think that's really ridiculous having to go through that much effort to recatch your Pokemon just to put them in the box. So, you know, that's, that's, that's something I'm not very fond of. So yeah, all I can really say is, you know, I, I dipped my toe back into the whole Pokemon thing. I'm looking into transferring all my Pokemon into Pokemon Home, but when it comes to stuff like the mobile game, it is definitely a hassle. And when it comes to the overall price of Pokemon Home, I do think that $15.99 is pretty expensive, you know? So that's my personal take on it. You know, many people have different opinions. But when it comes to me, I think it's overpriced, and I think that some of the transferring Pokemon over is pretty annoying. So, I don't know. That's all I really have to say about that. You know, there you go. Alrighty guys, with that being said, that brings me to the end of my week. As I said, not too much to talk about. Feel like I didn't really do much, but who knows? Maybe for the next podcast, maybe I'll have at least, you know, more anime to talk about since there is at least two shows that I want to look into. And who knows, you know, maybe by the next time I, I do a podcast, maybe I'll have played something different or watched something different, that sort of thing. But there you go. That's my week, you know, as unimpressive as it is. And uh, with that being said, you know, let's transfer over to the news, which just warning you guys now was also pretty short. I just felt like there wasn't a lot going on. But uh, regardless, when it comes to the first news story, as the title of the article states, Jeff Keighley to skip E3 2020. So I don't know how many of you guys know, but for the last few years, E3, which is like this big event where back in the day, you know, that was like the place to like announce your games and your systems and showcase all your titles and stuff. Even though E3 used to be really big and used to be like a really big deal and it was like the event for video games, it feels like in recent years it really has lost a lot of its like momentum. Uh, like first Nintendo stopped attending E3. Basically they chose to do like their own digital like, you know, directs during the same time. It's so, like that was a blow to E3. Then for like the last couple of years, Sony backed out. They said they'd rather do like their own like events or whatever. So yeah, it feels like E3 is really losing momentum. Uh, as this article states, Jeff Keighley, who, you know, he's a pretty famous guy around the industry. Uh, lately, you know, I guess he's gotten really famous because he's the guy that uh, runs the Game Awards, you know, every December. Apparently he was asked to produce this year and he basically said that he wasn't going to uh as you know i have a little excerpt here he basically says for the past 25 years i have attended every electronic entertainment expo 
Covering, hosting, and sharing E3 has always been hi the highlight of my year, not to mention a defining part of my career. I've debated what to say about E3 2020. While I want to support the developers who will showcase their work, I also need to be open and honest with you, the fans, about precisely what to expect from me. I have made the difficult decision to decline to produce E3 Coliseum. For the first time in 25 years, I will not be participating in E3. I look forward to supporting the industry in other ways and at other events in the future. So yeah, it's just one of those things where like, damn, you know, the fact that, you know, E3 has lost Sony, has lost Nintendo, and now they're losing this big guy who has been a big part of the industry. Like I said, you know, and as the article said, he's hosted it and covered it before and all sorts of stuff. The fact that he's backing away from it, it just really sucks, you know? It feels like E3 is losing a lot of momentum. And it's kind of sad because it used to be such a big event, you know? And I don't know, a lot of people wonder if it is politics. People wonder if maybe he doesn't want to be a part of E3 because he rather, you know, focus on his own event. The Game Awards show, people feel like maybe it's because of that. Other people say it doesn't matter. They feel like he's not that much of a loss, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. Just the fact that, you know, E3 keeps losing people. The fact that a lot of people are choosing to do like their own events. The fact that they've had trouble in these last years. Like I know last year, I think they accidentally leaked a bunch of information of like different people, like a lot of personal information. I don't know. I wouldn't say E3 is dead quite yet, but I do think that it is suffering. And based on some of the comments you see from people behind it saying that, oh, you know, this year's gonna be more about like influencers and actors on stage and that sort of thing. It seems like it's kind of losing like its way, you know? So I don't know. It'll be, it'll be really interesting. Uh, I think it's in June, right? Yeah, it should be in June. So that's a few months away. So seeing how it goes this year, it will be interesting. You know, I definitely want to keep my eyes out. I want to see if it like really is as bad as it seems. But I don't know. It just seems like it could be the beginning of the end. So I would just say, you know, if you're a fan of E3, keep an eye out for that. And just keep your fingers crossed that other events, such as the Game Awards... I guess, take over, you know, and really do a better job than E3 seems to be doing, since it does seem to keep pushing people away. So, you know, there you go. Alrighty, guys, moving on to movie news. This first news story is a weird one because, I don't know, let me, ex let me just say what the news story is first, then I'll kind of explain it. So as the title of the article states, Aladdin 2 officially happening at Disney not based on animated sequels. So that's the part that gets me. When I read the first part about Aladdin 2 happening, not gonna lie, even though I'm not really a fan of all these remakes, and even though I'm not really a fan of, I don't know, I always feel like the animation, like the animated version is usually better. When I read that Aladdin 2 was happening, I gotta admit, I was kind of down for it because I do feel like the, uh, the animated, you know, Aladdin sequels, I do feel like they're a bit underrated. Uh, maybe not the second one so much. The second one wasn't that good. But the third movie, in, you know, uh, which was called Aladdin and the King of Thieves, I do think it's a pretty good sequel, honestly. Like, it's not great, but if you've ever watched it, it's this really interesting movie where basically, you know, Aladdin and Jasmine are about to get married. As they're about to have their ceremony, uh, these thieves crash the wedding, and one of them happens to be Aladdin's father, who's apparently, like, the leader of these thieves and he's the king of thieves and so the movie is really interesting seeing aladdin you know like meet his dad having to deal with all these thieves trying to like you know ruin agrabah they're after this treasure and i don't know it's actually like a really i would say pretty interesting pretty underrated movie and so when i heard that they were making sequels you know the first thing that, make, that comes to mind is you know what? As much as I don't really like remakes, and I do think animated versions are usually better, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, uh, especially like the King of Thieves, I wouldn't mind seeing that movie made in live action. Because, you know, it's one of those movies that it's just so underrated that seeing people like, you know, a lot of people probably don't even know exist. it exists. So seeing people learn about it and seeing like this new version of it actually sounded kind of interesting to me. So when I read like the first part of the story where I read that there's like a sequel happening, I actually didn't mind it. I was actually like, like for once, I'm actually kind of on board. But then though, when I read the second part of the story that says that it's not based on the animated sequels, like that's the part that kills it for me. Like you have the groundwork there. You have, like I said, especially the third one is this really good movie that's underrated and you can probably do some good stuff with it. And then you're choosing to not 
do anything with it. So then what's the point? You know, it's like, I don't know. I just have mixed feelings about it. I think that's one of those things where they could have for once actually made a sequel that people cared about by diving into some of this content that's kind of underrated and a lot of people don't know about. And they just decided to ruin it by going, nah, we're going to make an Aladdin movie that has original content. And at, at that point, what's the point? It sounds really silly to me. So I don't know, guys. I just think that's really dumb. But I just wanted to share that, that yeah, apparently there is an Aladdin 2 coming out sometime soon i think that's kind of lame i'm not looking forward to it instead though i would say you know look up aladdin 3 uh you know king of thieves or whatever it's actually a pretty interesting movie i like the dynamic like i said where aladdin actually meets his dad and only that but it's interesting because in the first movie aladdin wishes to be a prince and it actually kind of comes true because with his dad being the king of thieves that makes him the prince of thieves which huh it looks like you know the, the genie didn't lie. Maybe Aladdin did get his wish, even if it was a little late, you know? So I don't know. That's a whole thing to look into. I think it's really fun. So I'm not looking forward to the new movie, but I do say watch that third movie. I recommend it. I think it's interesting. There you go. Moving on to a sequel that I am interested in. Uh, as the title of the article states, Rick Moranis returning for Disney's new Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movie. So that's right. I don't know how many of you know, but back in the day, you know, there was this guy called Rick Moranis. He came out in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. He came out in Spaceballs. He came out in, uh, what's the name? Uh, he came out in Ghostbusters. You know, he came out in all sorts of stuff. And unfortunately, he's one of those actors that despite being really lovable, really cool, uh, when he finished, I'm trying to remember what's the last movie he made. I don't, I'm not going to know, but if you read the article, it does say that he semi-retired in 1991. Since then, you know, he's just done like some voices and like some small cameos and other things, that sort of thing. But yeah, it's the kind of thing where it really sucks because despite being like a really awesome actor, uh, when his wife died from cancer in 1991, he basically, you know, retired because he wanted to spend time with his kids. Which is understandable and like, you know, good for him. But it's one of those things where like, man, it kind of sucks to like lose such a fun actor. Uh, fortunately though, I mean, I, I just like think it's a pretty cool idea. It says that for this new Disney Plus movie, basically he's coming back to reprise his role. Where basically, uh, it's going to be that he's going to have like a grown up son. Because in the original movies, you know, he used to have like a teenage son or whatever. Uh, well, I mean, he used to have like a teenage son and a baby, I think. Uh, one of them is going to be like grown up. And basically, it's going to be about how he wants to follow in his father's footsteps. He's going to also make a shrinking device. And that's where Rick Moranis comes in. Because he's going to, like, you know, I guess, uh, portray his part from the original movies. Where I guess he's going to be trying to help his son fix the machine or whatever. And I don't know. I just think the whole thing sounds fun. Uh, you know, usually I wouldn't be too excited for, like, a reboot slash sequel sort of thing. But I think the fact that they're bringing back this actor who hasn't acted in, like, in a long time, the fact that he seems excited about it, the fact that he's portraying, you know, his old character or whatever, it seems like, it seems fun, you know, I think it sounds cool, and I hope for the best, you know, I'm hoping that's a fun movie, I hope that hopefully his part is, like, a good part, hopefully, you know, it, it just, it's a fun movie overall, and I was gonna say, you know, if you guys have any love for Mick, Rick Moranis, then I would say keep an eye out for it, you know, because like I said, he was a really awesome actor during his time, I think it sucks that he retired, you know, due to things out of his control. But the fact that he's coming back sounds fun. And I just hope that, like I said, it's a good movie. And I hope that they use him well. So the fact that he's excited makes me excited. Hopefully it's a good movie. Fingers crossed. Alrighty, moving on to TV news. Uh, this is also a Disney Plus news story. Uh, as the title of the article states... Turner and Hooch TV show reboot coming to Disney Plus starring Josh Peck. So, I don't know. I mean, even though, like, you know, usually I'm pretty wary of reboots slash revivals. This is another one that I'll admit I'm kind of excited for. Uh, Turner and Hooch, for those of you who don't know, it's this really fun movie from back in, like, the 90s. Basically, it stars Tom Hanks as this, like, detective. And he's put together he's partnered up with this really ugly dog named hooch and basically the reason that he's partnered up with his dog is because once uh, hooch's owner is murdered 
they partner him up to take care of this dog, see if he can use the dog. You know, I guess if the dog recognizes the murderers, you know, that sort of thing. And it's just this really fun movie. I think it's, you know, it's a pretty like, comedic movie. You know, it's, it's fun. And I guess they're doing like this revival slash reboot thing starring Josh Peck. And I guess the reason I'm excited is because Josh Peck, I loved him when he was, you know, Josh over on Drake and Josh. I think he's a really fun actor. I think that I can really see him in this role, you know? I can, like, totally see him as, like, this detective dealing with this dog, you know, or whatever. Like, I don't know. I, I just, I feel like it makes sense. And I feel like it's not something that they're touching upon that's, like, I don't know. There's stuff that when they try to make, like, a revival slash reboot, it sounds stupid. Like, for instance, when they say they're going to do, like, a, a revival of the Mighty Ducks, but it's about like this mom that she's trying to make a team for her son so he doesn't feel left out. Like that sounds weird to me because it feels like it's losing the spirit of the movie, which the whole point is that it's like this ragtag group of kids coming together, you know, while here it's his mom making a team for him. Like that, that sounds weird. Here though, I mean, it seems like it's basically going to be like the same thing. It's a, it's a cop teaming up with the dog it's supposed to be a comedy honestly i think that sounds fine i think it sounds fun and the fact that josh peck is a really fun guy like i said i can see him in the role so i don't know i i'm optimistic about this one i'm hoping it's good obviously only time will tell for all we know it could be like a huge failure where like the dog is like a hundred percent cgi and like, the movie's just filled with dumb like fart jokes and it's all memey and stuff like it could happen but for the time being i'm optimistic I feel like it's one of those things that if it gets rebooted, not a big deal. And like I said, the fact that they have Josh Peck, who was really fun on Drake and Josh and who has like that comedy to him, I think it could work, you know? So I'm remaining optimistic. I don't know about any of you, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to keep an eye out for it. And same thing, you know, if you're, a jo- if you're a fan of Josh Peck, if you like him from stuff like Drake and Josh, then keep an eye out for it and you just hope for the best, I guess. So there you go. Alrighty guys, finally, moving on to my last news story. It is an anime news story, of course. And I do want to say that it's something I've talked about before. I want to say it's a bit of an update. I mean, I could be wrong, but hopefully I'm right. Uh, as the title of the article states, Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna Films Last Promo Video Streamed. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, but basically what it's trying to say is that if you guys remember, not too long ago, there was a movie series called Digimon Adventure Tree. And basically, Digimon Adventure Tree, it was supposed to follow the original cast from the original Digimon as teenagers being reunited with their Digimon. And I want to say that half of the series was pretty good. It did have some interesting ideas, and it was kind of cool how it made things a bit more mature by having the kids be older, you know, and I don't know, even like the fights felt more mature and stuff. Like, you know, it felt like it did age up, you know, with like the, it felt like it did age up the cast, you know, with people who would be watching it who have also grown up you know unfortunately though it feels like near like the latter half of the series especially the ending it feels like they kind of ran out of ideas or like they didn't really know what to do with it like honestly i watched all the movies and i don't really remember anything about this the last movie except that you know like oh they defeated the bad guy and that that's it i guess happily ever after for most people that's all i remember you know I feel like there wasn't really anything meaningful that happened. Like, they literally just defeated the bad guy. One of the new characters, she kind of suffers a great loss. As for everybody else, they just kind of move on, right? And I guess in order to make up for it, because a lot of people were disappointed with that ending, I think that's why I had heard they're making this movie called Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna. And basically, if you look at, like, the synopsis of it, uh, it says that, you know, the main characters... Most of them, you know, they're in university now, uh, especially Ty, who's been like the protagonist of the series. It says that he's a university student now. He's living alone. And, you know, basically, you know, he's kind of like not really sure what he wants to do with his life. Meanwhile, you know, his, his friend, you know, Matt, you know, his friend and rival and some of the others, they continue to actually deal with like Digimon problems. Like they're still working together 
with the Digimon. And what it says here is that basically because they're becoming adults, pretty soon they won't be able to hang out with their Digimon. I don't know why. I, I kind of forget, honestly, why you have to be a kid to have a Digimon. I feel like there's a reason. And so basically it says that this is going to be like kind of like a last hurrah where they're going to fight like a big evil again. And this is the last time they're going to see their Digimon. It's supposed to be really emotional, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, that's kind of what they had promised with Digimon Adventure Tree. They had said that it was supposed to be like this last emotional farewell. But, you know, since they really didn't do a good job with it for whatever reason, I guess they're looking at this as like a second chance. And so, yeah, I guess this is just supposed to be a meant. This is just supposed to be meant to be a movie where, you know, it's the last hurrah, fighting some big evil all together again, and finally saying goodbye to the Digimon. I guess. So, I don't know. I mean, it seems pretty interesting. Like I said, I did enjoy most of Digimon Adventure Tree. I did think it was fun seeing the characters grown up and like the story of being a bit more grown up, that sort of thing. And since I was disappointed with the ending, I hope this can do better. And there's not really much else to say. You know, if you read the article, it talks a little bit about the synopsis. It has the video where it shows the, the preview or whatever. You know, it doesn't show too much. But still, I I am kind of excited for it. Like I said, I hope it closes the story off, you know, better than like the last series did. So there you have it. You know, if you're a fan of Digimon, this is coming up soon. I believe if you read the article, it says that the film opens in Japan on February 21st and in the US on March 25th. It doesn't say anything about other regions, but, you know, if it's hitting the US in March, then I'm guessing the other regions are, you know, around the same time. Or at least soon to follow. So if you're a Digimon fan, there you go. New movie coming up. Hopefully, like I said, it wraps things up better than Tree did. So there you go. You know, if you're excited for it, keep an eye out for it. There you go. Alrighty, guys. And with that being said, that brings us to the end of another news week. Hopefully, you guys, you know, found some of the news stories to be informative, educational, entertaining, that sort of thing. Like I said, you know, it was a pretty quiet news week. I don't know why. I mean, for some reason, even video games, which usually have like two or three stories each week, for whatever reason, it was just very quiet this week. I don't know why. But regardless, you know, hopefully you guys got something out of it and you did enjoy one of the new stories that I I shared, you know? So yeah, there's that. Uh, With that being said, I do think we should transfer over to the content creator spotlight and the content creator spotlight, though this isn't the first time that I do it, just want to say that's another one of those channels that's really big and doesn't need my help, you know? Uh, Currently sitting at 221,000 subscribers, it's a big channel, doesn't really need my help, but regardless, you know, I really enjoy their content, so I really wanna, you know, share them with you guys. And even if only a few of my subscribers jump over to their channel and check their stuff out, I'm still glad to, you know, help out however I can. So, you know, there you go. Uh, So the channel that I'm talking about, of course, is a little channel called Pushing Up Roses. And Pushing Up Roses is this really interesting channel. It's run by this, you can call her like goth chick called Roses, that she does a mishmash of content. Uh, Lately, you know, the stuff that she's really focused on is that she really focuses on episodes of Murder, She Wrote, Goosebumps, Golden Girls, and other stuff that has to do with a horror, you know? So, for instance, like the last video she did, for instance was an episode, like, review slash retrospective of an episode of Murder, She Wrote. And for anyone who doesn't know, Murder, She Wrote is this show that's kind of like a, you know, murder, crime thriller sort of thing. Uh, It's about this lady that she's an author, and whenever a murder happens, you know, they kind of call her in, or she, like, finds herself in the story, and it's basically about her trying to solve the murder. And it's a really fun show, you know, I've watched it back in the day, and seen how... Uh, Roses covers each of the different episodes for one reason or another. It's pretty fun, you know? Uh, Same thing with Goosebumps, you know? If you guys have ever seen that Goosebumps TV show, basically she's just working her way through different episodes, whether because she thinks they're really good, and she thinks that, you know, for being like a kid's show, they actually are like pretty scary or whatever, or because she just thinks they're really corny and bad and she wants to make fun of them. But regardless, same thing, you know, it's some, some really good content. I think watching her, you know, break down the different Goosebumps episodes, once again, it's pretty interesting. So if you guys want, like, you know, stuff like murder mysteries or Goosebumps or, you know, stuff that has to do with Goosebumps, like uh, R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour, that sort of thing, then she has that going for her channel. You know, it's really fun watching her go over these shows and give her thoughts on them. 
Uh, however, another thing that she has on her channel, even though she has kind of moved away from it, but she does do it sometimes, is that she also has a lot of like reviews slash retrospectives on point and click games. So if you ever played stuff, you know, like old school stuff, you know, like uh, Monkey Island or King's Quest or... Uh, what else has she covered? Like King's Quest, Monkey Island, uh, like Day of the Tentacle. Uh, you know, a lot of those games by like LucasArts and what is it called? Like Sierra Vista or whatever. Like, if you've ever played any of those old school point and click games, uh, she has a lot of reviews slash retrospectives on those that I think is really interesting. Uh, like I said, she has kind of moved away from that in like recent years but every so often you know she'll she'll cover one and of course she does have her archive of them and i think those are pretty interesting you know even though i didn't like really play any of those a lot you know i did check out like a monkey island here and there and like a king's quest so i'm kind of familiar with the games and seeing her just talk about the different games and give her opinion on them you know that's really interesting too so yeah there you have it you know she's just this really interesting mishmash of old school video games and talking about old school tv shows uh, i know she's not going to be like someone for everyone but still you know i just think that if either of those things catches your attention either the point and click games or you know like the murder mystery slash kids horror or whatever then i would say check her out once again her name is pushing up roses and even though she doesn't need my help at all like i said she's sitting in like 221 thousand subscribers I don't know. I still think it'd be cool if you guys checked her out. If you guys are interested, you know, like her stuff, comment on it, you know, maybe even subscribe. And as always, you know, if you guys show her some love, tell her the wannabe rev reviewer sent you. And like I said, you know, check her out. If she sounds interesting, there you go. Alrighty, guys. So with that being said, that brings us to the end of another podcast. That is one more in the bag. I know that it was kind of a short podcast this week, you know, both when it came to what I did this week and news. I just felt like, you know, pretty short in both aspects, but it is what it is. And as always, hopefully you guys enjoyed what I brought to the table. Hopefully there was something that made your listening, you know, worthwhile or whatever. So there's that. Uh, really quickly, you know, before I log off, I mentioned near the beginning of the podcast that, you know, there was some stuff happening with my channel that I want to talk about. And some of you might have noticed that sure enough, over on my channel, I haven't been really putting out content lately. And as I want to say that I'm not closing down the channel, you know, that's not happening. Uh, you know, if it were to ever happen, don't worry, I would give you guys like a big heads up. Trust me. But what I do want to say is that lately, I haven't been feeling it, you know, uh, you know, before I feel like I would be really excited to make content and I was really feeling it. And if I ever missed a week of content, you know, I ever missed like a review or like a podcast, I almost felt bad because I wanted to like make, make it up and I wanted to hurry back and get back to it. But lately, I don't know, it might just be the combination of real life stressors and seeing the state of YouTube and I mean, some of those tips that that bigger channel gave me if you guys remember you know i said i was talking to a bigger channel they were giving me some tips on some stuff i should do to change my channel up and stuff i don't know if it's just everything combined or whatever but i gotta admit at the moment i feel kind of apathetic about the channel honestly i'm just gonna be honest like it's not as bad as you guys think you know it's not like oh i hate the channel and i hate my content it's not that sort of thing but i just feel very you know unattached from the channel and i'm just not really feeling the whole content thing right now and don't i mean i, I don't know I, I i definitely feel like i'm probably making it sound really dark don't worry guys i'm not depressed like i said you know i'm not shutting the channel down but i guess what i'm trying to say is that i'm not enjoying uh, you know i'm not enjoying content creation right now Com that combined with the fact that i do want to make some changes to the channel to maybe make it more successful or to make it more i don't know if you could call it profitable i don't know if that's the right word but I don't know. I just feel like I really need to step away from the channel for right now. I guess it's like long story short. Uh, it's not happening quite yet. You know, I do still have that Cuphead giveaway. I do still have, you know, I'm hoping to do a review of that Sonic movie coming up. But pretty soon, you know, I will give you guys the warning when I do. But I'm pretty sure that pretty soon I probably will be taking a hiatus from the channel and stepping away from it for a while. Will it be a month? Will it be more? I don't know. 
But yeah, I'm just really not feeling the whole content creation thing going right now. I just feel like, you know, I'm putting so much into the channel and I'm not seeing it grow the way I want it to. And even the content, sometimes I look at it and I'm not really happy with it. It's just one of those things where like I look at how other reviewers do it or like other people who review movies, for instance, they have like a constant stream of like reviews going up that I feel like I can't compete with. And that's the thing, you know, a lot of people are probably going to say, well, don't compete. And that's my point, though, that I don't know how not to compete. I want to find my own thing, but I don't know what it is yet, you know? And so that's part of why I want to step away because, like I said, it's not that I'm, like, depressed or I hate my content or anything, but I really feel like I need to step away, like, find myself again, find that joy for making videos, and really think about what I want to do that makes my channel unique, you know? Because when it comes to reviews, I feel like that's not really cutting it, you know? So I don't know, maybe it'll be like, you know, once a week, I do a regular review like I've done up to now, where I cover something new. And then maybe like on a, like on a Wednesday, for instance, I'll do a review of something older. That way I don't have to worry about staying trendy. And then like on a Friday, maybe I'll do like a video essay, like a, you know, forget me not or, you know, something like that. So I mean, that's an idea I've had where maybe, you know, if I take some time off, I can like, you know, do some scripts and I can do that sort of thing. That way I have like lots of other content on my channel or I don't know, maybe I'll try to like bring in other people to my channel. Like one of the things that that person who was giving me tips, they were saying that even though I do a good job of running the podcast by myself, they definitely suggest having like more guests on and maybe a co-host. And that's been hard because I don't really know anybody who I feel I can like have as a co-host you know, uh, like, you know, I don't really know anybody in real life who seems like to be interested, but yeah, maybe they're right. Maybe I should take the time to look for somebody online. There's gotta be somebody who's interested, right? So just stuff like that. Or like, maybe I just want to rethink my channel. Maybe, you know, bring in other people. So it's not just me or maybe, you know, rethink of how I want to do my videos. So maybe the, I do still have reviews, but I also have like video essays since I do enjoy doing those. And I do feel like those are the ones that kind of bring in people you know because they feel like they're more personal that sort of thing so i don't know i'm just like really trying to think of what to do with my channel unfortunately i don't have any of the answers right now but what i can say is that number one don't worry i'm not getting rid of the channel you know that's not happening i i, I will i will be back you know so that's number one number two don't worry you know i'm not depressed you know i'm not going through anything like terrible in my life i'm all right you know so that, that's another one and number three you know i'll let you guys know like I said, I don't know exactly when it's going to be, but whenever it happens, I will let you guys know. But, you know, the, most likely soon, I will be taking a hiatus because I'm just not really feeling the content creator thing right now. And I really want to just find myself again, find that joy for making videos, find a new format that I think, like, really speaks me, you know, that really makes me stand out as a channel that I feel really has an identity, you know. So there you go. just want to share that with you guys. Like I said, sorry for being kind of a downer. I know it probably sounds really negative, but I just want to say it because, you know, I've been feeling it for a while now and, you know, yeah, I'm probably going to take a hiatus. So I just thought it was fair to give you guys the warning, you know, ahead of time. But uh, with that being said, guys, you know, it's not happening quite yet. So in the meantime, look forward to stuff like the Cuphead giveaway. Maybe there will be a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, you know, review going up. So look forward to that sort of stuff. And yeah, for now, the podcast will keep going. So, you know, I will try my best to be back here next week for episode 68. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Until the next time I see you guys. And until then, my name is Be Reviewer. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.